I am Ines Rivas. I work here at Lima College in the Department of Spanish, uh, and I'm the coordinator of uh, the language plan. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased to introduce this panel, uh, Out with the Old, In with the New, Blended Learning in Elementary Italian. Um, we have four presenters who will share their experience in creating an elementary Italian blended course. And we will start with uh, Jessica Egan, Egan, who is the coordinator of the Five Colleges Blended Learning Instructional Technology. Then we will um, continue with Maria Suchi Hampstead uh, at uh, Smith College. You know that there's Loli at Smith College also. And we'll end with Morena Svaldi from Mount Holyoke. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, so the five college consortium, raise your hand if you've ever heard of this or maybe are a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> so we're a consortium of five different colleges in Western Massachusetts. I've used acronyms in the PowerPoint, so I just kind of put them up there as a guide. Amherst College, Hampshire College, Mount Holyoke, Smith, and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And then I am an instructional technologist and the coordinator for the Five Colleges Incorporated. And this is a nonprofit that was established in the 60s. And we have a couple goals here, and I think our presentation really hones in on the first one, which is sharing resources, facilities, pedagogy, ideas. Um, there's a library system. You might have heard of Museums 10, the thing, Five Colleges, and also cross registration. So our blended learning program really encourages cross-registration and getting people to take courses at other campuses, and then ultimately that eliminates some travel barriers as well. So this specific program, we have two different grants. It's going to be about a three-year contract altogether. And we have about eight to ten projects per year. Most of the projects this year were based in language learning, and there's a huge collaboration between our infrastructure internally at five colleges and also local campus IT. Without their help and without consulting with them, this really wouldn't be possible. So that's something we really try and emphasize. So for the first year, these were our projects. The first one's the one that we're showcasing today. We also had advanced Chinese newspaper and or newspaper reading and news watching, which we have two projects that you're familiar with us. Introduction to Logic, which was <coughs> incorporating a game into a logic course to try and help math phobic students. Um, instead of just having problem sets, we went through a game. Blended and flipped Japanese classes. Roman archaeology, which is awesome about a simulation in Pompeii, where they use Google Maps, video and pictures taken from the faculty member and Google Forms all at one time. And they kind of were able to answer Google Forms and answer questions like, what are you seeing? What's the difference between the map and the actual picture? Is there anything in the site that you can see a little bit <coughs> aside from Google Maps? And also visual journalism, which was photojournalism for any maps as well. I think next up we have Hi, uh, good afternoon. I'm going to start with a uh, small presentation of, um, about our province because I think it would be very helpful uh, in understanding where we come from and what brought us to decide to embark on this project. So um, we are very similar. Mongolia and uh, Smith College are very similar colleges, uh, small liberal arts colleges, uh, women's colleges. And our departments are also very similar, uh, not just in size, but because of the composition of the, of the student body and the people who work there. Um, we are, like Jessica said, part of the five colleges consortium, but Italian is only offering three of these. So that means that we get students from the two where Italian is not offered, and that makes the composition of our classrooms more diverse, which is great. We really enjoy that. That's when we get the main students. Uh, um, but uh, it's, it's 
so at both colleges, we also are, um, another thing that we have in common, another strength, is that we offer um, traditional, uh, which means a, a regular elementary course at elementary level, and also what we call an accelerated, and at Unholy Office called an intensive course at elementary level. As you all know, Italian is not offered in many high schools around the country, so most of the students who come to college start from scratch, they have to start from the beginning. And even those who took maybe two or three or even four years of Italian at high school sometimes are not able to place into our intermediate level, so they need to start again. Um, so most of the students we have take the elementary level. They Accelerated or intensive is there for those students who maybe missed the chance of starting in the fall uh, because it is offered at both colleges in the spring. And uh, so it's a chance to catch up so that the following year they will be able to take the intermediate. Uh, the difference is that the traditional is a two semester course, the accelerated or intensive, uh, we do everything that we do in the other course, but just in one semester. Um, the enrollments are also similar in our departments because uh, Malfolio has a language requirement that uh, was moved uh, last year to one semester. They have a one semester language re uh, requirement, which means in the fall they have larger groups in the elementary level, but a lot of these students, when they're done with their requirement, leave. Uh, we don't have a lang language requirement, so we have smaller classes in the fall However, our students, they enroll in the fall, they must stay for two semesters. They must complete the elementary. So uh, we have the same number continuing in the spring. And that makes our number very, very similar, which is roughly uh, between 40 and 50 students enrolled in all the sections of all the elementary courses uh, each academic year. We also have in common the, uh, the textbook. This is the textbook that we've been using for uh, about eight, nine years. Uh, it's called Avanti by Asti and Strachey. And we, um, although we meet regularly uh, several times during the academic year, formally and informally, uh, we didn't adopt this textbook. Uh, we didn't consult each other back in Italian. We are in the third edition now. But uh, we know now that we work together that we all love this textbook. It's actually a very popular textbook all around the United States. It's very popular with Italian language instructors. And what we like as instructors is that it comes with an online component. Uh, it's on a platform called Connect. Uh, we like this component, well, first of all, because it's very easy to encourage students to take, to repeat each activity several times until they feel they are ready to move on. And um, we, there are several settings, we choose the setting that allows them to get the highest possible grade um, by repeating the activities until they get the grade that they want. Um, and that's really a step forward to when we use, until not too long ago, the traditional workbook. Uh, the students also know it, what they like. In fact, uh, just this morning I got the evaluations for this past semester and several students again mentioned that this was a, a very good component to the course. What they like is that it's very uh, diverse. They um, enjoy, well, we know, this generation enjoys working on the laptops. And, um, so when they go home, when the class is over, they go home and this is what they'll see. It's a customized home page. Uh, this is organized for our class. Um, and so this is where they find out what uh, the assignments are. Of course, they, it, it's like a bank of activities that is infinite. And of course, we don't use everything. We just take what we think is more appropriate. And we try to um, take uh, different activities to make it even more valid. And, and as you can see, I chose this page because it shows that you have all kinds of activities, multiple choice, uh, uh, sentence completion, presentations, uh, listening comprehensions. And it's very colorful and very um, it changes. Every activity looks different, so the students don't get bored. That's a danger today. They tend to get bored and maybe something is repetitive. But here, they seem to be OK. Um, for 
example, they are asked to read the time. Uh, in the second part of the activity, they are listening to somebody is telling the time, and they have to compare with what they see on the clock and decide if what they heard matches what they see, uh, and so on. Another activity that is nice, a good example of this, is the one on the right. Um, but I actually chose it for because it's good, but it's also bad from our point of view. And um, you can see, again, colorful, same characters that the students have gotten to know in the, on the textbook. They introduce themselves, so they have to listen to what they say. Uh, it's good for the vocabulary. However, I would like to, you to notice, and I'm going to go back to the in just a minute, but I would like you to notice that the, these presentations, these listening comprehensions, are very, very short. And that uh, is a problem. Um, I decided also to give you another example. This is a, um, a dialogue that uh, is it, not on the online workbook, it's actually from the textbook. But I actually think that this is the longest dialogue in the entire textbook, in the entire program. And um, you can imagine we feel that it's short. Uh, we uh, know from students' feedback that students need more uh, practice than that. So um, this is all we, that we have in common. And then uh, we realize that also the challenges that we face are very, very similar. Um, one in particular that has emerged in the last few years is that our student population is more and more diverse. We are enrolling students from many, many countries. And so we don't have a traditional student with a background of, a, of being a, a language speaker anymore, or at least English is not the first language anymore. Um, and of these international students, a lot come with uh, the native language, which is an East Asian language. So I'm thinking of Korean, Japanese, and a lot of Chinese students, maybe. Um, one thing that we have noticed is that these students sometimes they come to us after two or even four years of high school in the United States, and so they're very fluent in English. Other times they uh, come straight from their hometown. Um, and their English is usually fairly good, and the better their English, the better they do in the Italian class because of the similarities of the two languages. But if their English is not that good, then um, there are problems. And um, it's interesting how generally they're all very hard workers, they work really hard, and when we get their written work, we notice that it's very, very good compositions, grammar, quizzes, tests. However, in the past, when we got that kind of written work and we went back to the classroom, we would notice that we have in front of us a student who can have a conversation with us and with the rest of the class. Now, in this case, uh, there's a very large gap between what are their skills in writing and reading and what they are when it comes to listening comprehension. So as a consequence, they are not able to have a conversation because if you don't understand what you're told or asked, it's harder to continue the conversation. And they've been asking us for a long time and constantly they come, keep coming to our offices, they ask for more practice, they want more listening comprehension, more practice. Um, we do have the Tavola Italiana, which we meet for lunch once a week, but it's not the same thing. We do have movies, we suggest that they watch movies in Italian. We have sort of teacher assistants, which are either graduate students or uh, native or near native um, speakers who help us with small groups uh, in which they have conversation in Italian, but still it seems not to be enough. What they want is be able to put their headphones on and listen to a native speaker or a conversation or something so that they can practice listening to the sounds that are typical of the, of the Italian language. Um, so that was one challenge. The other challenge, um, and the, the equal pretty much, is the fact that all students, also our traditional students, seems to be, seem to be less and less familiar with uh, the basics of grammar. Apparently, the way they study grammar in high school, either uh, in a foreign language class or English, I guess, the foreign language, they, they are not used to hearing simple 
firm. So they come to our office hours and they say, well, I'm not sure. You keep saying, you keep talking about conjugating verbs, or there are some definitions that I'm not familiar with. We, we talk about the uh, definition of an adjective versus the definition of an adverb, uh, or agreement. You know, this word keeps coming up, agreement. The, the adjective has to agree with the noun, or the article has to agree with the noun. And so we realized that something that we also needed that didn't seem, that the book didn't seem to provide was extra instruction, uh, more personalized in the way the book is very good, but rather than going home and reading those pages again, it seemed like the students wanted us to explain to them those rules or those concepts in the way that we do in class, but again, we want to listen to those explanations again and again. So these were the goals that I've already talked about. Provide um, students with more materials. Um, these are now materials, I think we talk about this again and again, uh, that necessarily will be assigned to the students uh, systematically, but more uh, when they need them, because um, at this point we have a lot of materials, but the, the beauty of uh, our project and all that we produce is that everything can be used as much or as little as needed. Um, um, provide tools to improve their listening comprehension and um, to help them understand uh, grammatical concepts that they are not familiar with. So Maria talked about, she presented a course of similarities in the uh, two colleges, uh, Italian in the five colleges often three of them, UMass, Smith, and Mount Holyoke, a collaboration was actually just between three of us. Um, so what I'm going to try to talk to you about is how working together was basically the foundation for the success of the, pro of the, um, of the project in itself. Um, there are clearly several things. It may be some, maybe sounding something obvious, too obvious to you, that you need to be working well together with the people you're working with in order to uh, be able to produce something. But we thought that um, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to what Maria said at the very beginning. So that we realized as we were working on this project that we had already been collaborating so well before getting onto this project, and that was highly beneficial to our working extra well and uh, successfully to keep the project. We've been on this project for about a year, and we've been constantly working on it and moving on from one stage to another. Um, so we. The odds when, when we went into this project knowing and thinking and hoping that um, the odds and outcome of the project would be something that would then benefit the students learning and their learning of Italian. But we also found some advantages for us as, as lecturers, as teachers, as colleagues, and professionals in this field. Um, we, first of all, um, we're introduced to a very like rich and incredible piece of audience here today for the last next two days to talk about the, the, the world of technology and everything that the online world actually can provide us in order to make our teaching instruction, instruction and classes richer and richer. Um, we went into this project already having our favorite uh, tools, and I'm going to skip to maybe okay, I'm gonna skip to this for a second, but. Um, so I think what I'm going to try and talk to you about, I'm going to try and, and single out three main advantages that we found in our project. And they, the, um, the sequence and the evolution of these three advantages and three characteristics of our project pretty much define the way we work on this project in a chronological order. So first of all, we, the collaboration I said at the very beginning is, is very important. Again, these may sound like an obvious some things to say when you work with other people. Um, but the fact that we were already working so well together and we knew exactly what each one of us had to do, we had very clear expectations and responsibilities, that was highly important for the production of um, these activities that was the aim of our project. So at the very beginning, as Maria was explaining, the project was it's heavily based on the textbook, Avanti, um, which is made of 18, 16, 16 chapters. 
Um, so at the very beginning of, of the project, so about a year ago, um, these spreadsheet um, was created detailing exactly what had to be done for each chapter, for each of the components that we had proposed to develop. So what you're seeing here is there are 16 of these you know, sections, one for each chapter, and for each chapter we proposed to develop six different components. So what you see in these six boxes um, are basically the bullet points correspond to one thing that we created, we produced, we came up with. Um, and again, this was done fairly easily, I suppose, at the very beginning, but this is what um, we relied on in order to successfully move on. We didn't work together, we didn't meet during what we met regularly. So, and I'm going to say something about this, which is also, I think, very interesting about the whole project. But it's not like we would meet regularly together in a place and do this work together. I like to think about collaboration as being blended in, in itself because we were never together. What well, Mount Holyoke and, and Smith are about 20 minutes apart, and I was in Italy for the whole year. So we had necessarily to be working to share ideas, material in a, in a common space which was in itself blended, so I don't know why. So again, this would be, I mean, to me, this was very important. The very fact that I wasn't able to communicate with them um, unless through emails, and I, I could go back to these and see exactly what I was supposed to be doing, and rely on them at the end, or I'm going to do the same thing they did. Um, so the schedule, again, was very important. Um, this is a moment in Maria's office with um, Jessica and Mom. Amalia. Yeah. And, and Corina, she's in the big box over there in Mount Holyoke. And again, this is what would happen. And again, we would meet regularly. And supposedly I wasn't there. I'm not sure what it was. But <laughs> I was probably sleeping. But, um, initially. but again, we would work separately following the schedule and then regularly be meeting online on Skype, Zoom, wherever to talk about a few important things that would arise from, from our own individual work. And um, so that we'll be, we will be able to move on to the next phase of the project. So what did we actually do? Uh, and I'm going to give you a few numbers here. We, for all of those bullet points, all those sections, we created material. So we, we, we basically produced around 200 activities for the whole project. Um, and you can see them detailed here. Um, so we started from two audio conversations about 32 audio streets, basically 32 dialogues. What Marie was saying at the very beginning, or before we, she was saying that um, what the book, the textbook itself provides is that kind of a dialogue. That's the longest dialogue you can find in the textbook. And in the course that in itself aims at developing students' linguistic or linguistic ability. Um, so we basically want students to have our two courses, let me do that there, our two courses are year long, so two semesters. Um, it's the same course, they have to take both courses in order to complete, otherwise they're not given credit. And I think it's the same amount of credit. So our ultimate goal at the end of the spring semester, in about in April, around April, is to have students be able to actually have a dialogue, have a conversation, it's an basic one, be able to respond to the questions or to be able to do the very specific linguistic tasks. So those are 32 dialogues longer than obviously what they would be provided. Two audio conversations based conversations based on authentic communication situations sent on the topic of each in chat within 32. Um, these are two recordings of the dialogues and so there will be different characters. We recorded them, obviously between ourselves, I from Italy, with other people, reading, and again, the dialogue, the conversation are based on the grammar um, points, the grammar, um, you know, the topic, centers that they're direct, the center of that particular chapter. Two quizzes on the audio material, 32 quizzes on the, um, basically, the, the audio conversation, which is on the audio, Script, two three tutorials for the focus on explaining grammar functions. So two and again the conversation are based on grammar in each specific chapter. So we uh, produce two three tutorials to explain those particular 
random factors, about 40, then was two to three. One quiz, okay, one quiz, <laughs> in on each um, tutorial, so again, about 40. Two, practice, these are the only actual grammar exercises that we have to do in the project. So, and finally, one audio exercise with an oral assignment that to do so that communication skills are basically, we uh, tell them, we record, we ask them to um, basically, um, you know, challenge themselves with, 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 with saying something. So, so we give them a specific task uh, of now you say this. And we record it again. It's, nothing's written. We recorded our task. They listen to what we say. They produce their, you know, their, their speaking and their all um, conversation. They're recorded through uh, Jing, which uh, Morina will explain to you. Okay. So that's about one per, per chapter. So all in all, that's about 200. I think that's a lot. That's a lot of quantitatively. It's a lot of stuff. Okay. And, and again, later it will become clear where what did we do with all this stuff? Where is it? How can we use it in our classes? And I and I want to sh to show you um, basically what we did. So we we've, we've used Google Docs, and that's. That's, this, this was our place to meet, so meeting place. This is where we would go. Sometimes we see Morena and Maria up there, chat them up. Um, and, and so, like, if you want to see just chapter 12, what 12 are time. So there are two recordings. These two are the two conversation dialogue scripts. Two recordings, one, two quizzes based on the Dialogues. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm confusing dialogue with conversation. When I talk, I'm trying to stick to one word for each thing. Script is the script of the dialogue, and the conversation is the audio of the dialogue. There are, um, in this case, three, to, well, actually four, four tutorials. Um, so that's grammar. That, the parliamo, is the final speaking task where students actually have to respond to um, our questions, our task. And, and there will be tutorials that are actually housed in a different place. Let me show you. Um, okay, so that's the key list of all the tutorials to the grammar explanation that we created for each chapter. And I'm going to explain in a minute how we did it. So each link is one tutorial. Are you going to pay a damage or should they pay it? Okay. okay, so technology, this goes back to what I said at the very beginning. We all went into this um, project knowing and having our favorite technological tools um, to use. Um, we, as, as, as Italian colleagues in the Italian college, we meet at least once a year to talk about this, to talk about language pedagogy, and to share ideas, and pretty much what we're doing here today. Um, so, personally, and I think Maria agrees with me, but we had a favorite, which is iJob, which I've used a lot in my, my course, and this is a website through which you can, you can uh, just sign up for free, and you can have students record. Uh, how many of you are familiar with iJob? No one is. <laughs> Okay, so basically students, I, I use that particular, I use this website in my conversation classes and students can record the video of about one minute or 90 seconds, uh, so very short. Um, I would give them a task, they would create a video, and send the, the, the website would send the video directly to my email account, so they would not really have to download anything, it's very easy, and, and there was the speaking task for that particular um, course. Story Kit is another very, very basic actually, um, app that I've had students use all this for the conversation class on their phone, on their iPhone or iPad, and basically the final project was to create a visual narrative through pictures they would take of content. And I think one time in particular I asked them, what does Smith represent to me? What is Smith to you? And that there to explain, answer that question, address that topic by putting together so many 
picture of plane 7 and add an explanation, a spoken explanation to that particular picture they will take. So you can take a picture, add it in the slide, record, they could add some scribbles, colors, and stuff like that. So these were the, we knew, it's not like we went to this point, we're not being completely unaware of that, what the technological work could actually offer. But we also learned a lot, and we feel like, we don't really feel like we're experts, but we 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 had to like skim through a lot in order to come to what we actually thought was useful for our for the, for the purpose of our project and what we could actually implement in, in our course. So what you're seeing there is a screenshot of um, Show Me, which is the um, tool that we use in order to create um, tutorials. Um, I'm going to show you one in, in a minute. What this is basically uh, uh, allows you to, they will, students will then see us, you don't really hear our voices explaining what is the topic of that particular tutorial. So it's basically a whiteboard where we can write. I use a, we all use a, an iPad in order to create that. Um, we can write, we can point, you can use different colors. Um, and uh, it's basically looking at the board and but now you're actually looking at the person speaking. So let me let me show you that for a second. This is Maria talking about reflexive uh, tic tac. Buongiorno, oggi parliamo delle idee dei riflessi al passato prossimo. Prima di tutto ricordiamo che i verbi riflessivi devono essere coniugati con i pronomi riflessivi. Dare, essere. Fare, noi ci siamo lavati, tre plurali maschile, oppure noi ci siamo lavate, quindi nesso, del maschile singolare, perché Paolo è un soggetto maschile singolare. Nel secondo esempio, Anna si è messa le lenti a contatto. Ok, so tutorials vary, the length of the tutorials vary between two minutes, this is the two minutes, three, I think, the longest we produce is probably four minutes, four and a half minutes. Uh, and four and a half minutes is really pushing it. It's a bit already quite long. Um, this is in Italian, the very the early one, the, the one that we created for the very first chapters are in English. Um, you may think so remember what chapter this is? I think it was this uh, chapter. This is the third semester, this is the fourth semester. So but by now students cannot speak Italian. This is before Christmas, when this is the first time in Italian. But everything is in Italian. The advantage of this is that they can play and replay this as many times as they like. We tell them very clearly you're not supposed to, we'll, you will not be understanding everything, but you're not supposed to understand everything. This only comes after Maria has already explained the reflexive verbs in the class. And, and, and also, um, this was like, again, what somebody, Maria was saying at the very beginning, the fact that Maria is speaking right there is comforting for students. He's basically bringing your um, professor home. Now, we're, this is a private liberal arts union college, mm -hmm. so we, this is also interesting in that respect. This may not work in a large, maybe, um, state university. It does work for, for our particular demographic of students. Um, There are clearly some pedagogical advantages and, and, and outcomes that came out of this project. Now remember that we are, we've, just, we've just finished this project. Um, Lorena was the only one of, our, of us, among us, that was actually able to test it with some of our students and she will show you some of the data that came out of that. Um, so we don't really have specific data about how as students learning uh, improved as a result of their using this particular but we we've seen some 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 progression, some some positive side of these words, um, and I've, I've now sort of summarised a few of them here. They're all the same, despite the fact that these are given different kind of bullet points, but these are all the same kind of outcomes. Um, well, the first two are not. Sorry, um, we felt that having students using incorporating these blended learning sort of activities into our courses help students feel that what they were doing was done especially for them, which is actually true. We created this on a book that we've used for so many years 
in this particular process, we know our students, we know what the book is missing, and we, we know what we think we should give our students. So this is definitely personalized. It, this is for them. Um, by means of the fact that all these material, all these 200 activities are housed in Mordor, um, students can access it whenever they like. Um, they can play and replay um, audios and, and retake quizzes and uh, as many times as they like. Um, we tell them, I mean, we haven't really decided how we're going to, if and how we're going to grade that and whether we're going to we had this conversation in one, one other session before. Uh, so all these activities are not associated per se with a percentage of the grade. But we try to, you know, to, to communicate and tell students that this has to be a stress-free sort of activity. We want them to use these tools in order for them to become more familiar, more comfortable with the language. Um, so we're happy when the students actually retake quizzes so many times. This is also true for the case of Connect, which is an online component that comes with the book. There's a grade associated with that. So we tell them, you can you can take this quiz 100 times, and maybe by the 100th time, you will get to 100, and that's OK. Students at least will have taken that particular exercise 100 times, which is definitely beneficial. I mean, repetition is drilling. It's not the drilling. Idea. There's more authentic and student driven task incorporated in the book. Now, something that we thought was lacking in the book is was real material. Um, the audio, the, the audios that the book provides are very poor. They're really, really poor. And they never really, it, although the, the, the whole online component has been updated two years ago, frankly, complete, they've changed everything, and they've done a wonderful job. They kept the same audios, conversation, videos, they were already there before on the DVD. Which, you know, they're very, some of them are very short, um, not even interviews. Like there's a question, four, five people interviewed, and the person just answered the question, answered the question, and the answer is very briefly, people have very different accents from north to south. It's also very confusing for us. Um, so, well, we, we also know the of each other, but, but the fact that we created this, this audios doesn't really get any more bigger than that. I mean, it's our, it's our voices, it, it, it's us, so it's very real. And once again, it, it um, increased um, student engagement, uh, both with material, uh, but also in among them, um, in class, and so we felt that students were I'm going to say participate differently, not better, not worse, but differently. They feel more comfortable in using um, the language and producing sound. But by this stage, um, in the first semester, are also very strange and new to them. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that's it for me. Okay, okay so I have to say that we work so well that we finish the producer the material in the fall instead of the spring. And we were so excited to uh, start to use the material that um, we um, we tried to I know we use it during the for the Arbor Italian 103 course. That is an intensive Italian, uh, extremely uh, difficult and complex course that I taught uh, in spring because it's an eight credits and I meet my students every day for one hour to fifty minutes. It means that I see them more than my relatives. Uh, <laughs> basically, the work that usually you complete in two semesters in one. And uh, usually this course is purposed for students already familiar with another Roman language. It means that students, they really want to take this class because they want to move very quick, quickly to the first semester. I had uh, seven students, uh, one student with special need, so it was very important during the summer after the to decide uh, the technology to meet uh, the staff that talk about accessibility. In particular, these students uh, is deaf, so she couldn't listen, she couldn't produce, she couldn't uh, listen the tutorial, she couldn't record uh, any uh, jingle. The jingle is a technology that we, where you can uh, show picture and talk about the picture that you're showing. 
um, if you're familiar with uh, 106, but, but basically you meet the students every day, you go through conversation, songs, uh, movies, they, they meet the language assistant every week, uh, there are seven tables during the semester, uh, usually we cover one or two chapters per week, so, so there is no way the students are pleased that they have to work super hard. Imagine that they have also other classes, at least other three classes. Um, the, the, the point is that we had, uh, for, for example, 102, 103, the classical you know, Italian course. Uh, we moved the recipe from uh, five meetings to 15 minutes long from three meetings because we lost the former fellow. Um, for example, it was students from abroad that you know, taught our conversation class. So our need was to give them the chance, uh, the material to talk and practice outside the class. Yes, we have the connect, yes, we have the homework online, but again, we had uh, we changed our student body and the, we had the more need to give the chance to the students to listen and to talk outside the class. Um, the course goal uh, for Italian 103 is to be ready in one semester to move to the third semester in the fall. And I have to say that almost uh, the 90% of the students uh, will be in Italian 201 next semester. Um, just to give you an idea about the grades, so this is 20% uh, between the participation and attendance and the conversation in the language system, then there is a uh, the connect is the homework online, plus they have to listen to the audio and they have to take the test on Moodle. I can show you Moodle very quickly. And then composition and then six specific classes, final exam, the midterm, um, practically 15 G, one for each chapter, and the final project that was in class. Um, Okay, so you have to explain to students, uh, because we have a lot of material, and one of the things that you have to give them uh, is the methodology. They have to know exactly that every week, at the beginning of the week, uh, you give them their assignments, for example, Monday. And they know that most of the assignments are due Friday or Thursday. So after the second week, they're used to, they know that exactly they have to follow the same schedule. I will show you also. Um, the Moodle, so it will be very easy for them to really follow what you're also teaching in class. So there is a part of Moodle that say write it to the new element dependent uh, course material on site. Uh, remember that for each chapter you listen to audio and you will take uh, uh, the quizzes right after. If uh, they make more than three mistakes uh, after doing the quiz, uh, they have to re listen the audio and they are to retake the quiz. Okay. Only if they make less than two mistakes so they can move to the second audio. And again, they have to take it again the quiz. The tutorial was not ready at that point because we had to import a lot of material Moodle and we need the extra time. So we were ready only for the audio. It was good because it was also pilot. We didn't want to give them too many, too much material, I think it was overwhelming, okay? One also mistake that usually we tend to do is that we have project, we have connect, uh, we have the TPT class, uh, and plus we have also the blend. This seems too much. So what we, what we want to do is really to make sure that we don't um, overwhelm our students. And we create uh, like a bank of material where students can go and find the material that they need. For example, we have students that need to listen more. We have students that they need, they need to listen there to speak more. They have student, we have students that they need to work more on grammar. So the things that give them a lot of material that is based for them, but based on each chapter. Um, and then we will give you the information about uh, of course, the tutorial and uh, the point is that try to have fun, try to you know, follow the our um, discussion, but also try to enjoy what you're doing. Um, and keep in mind that learning a foreign language requires time, requires practice, and preparation, um, and take advantage to work on online components and, and have fun. Um, 
they um, during after that we create our project during in May we participated at the summer um, institute organized by the five college of blended Mellon uh, grant and it was very useful to work on the learning the course learning of checks because you want to exactly understand okay if we uh, assign a connect uh, or your smart uh, or the conversation in class it means that we are working on identifying and analyzing the market expression for them if we um, organize the internet table or the conversation in the language assist okay it means that we need to work uh, on the, let's say, how to express in Italian, sort of how to have a conversation in Italian. If we, for example, we create the audio, the conversation, or the movie, the class activity, we probably want to teach them the content of society, the content, the geography, the thematic expression, and so on. So it was very useful and useful for me to try to you know, uh, analyze each assignment and uh, make sure that each assignment works on specific skills. Okay. Um, for example, I want to show you, uh, this is an idea about uh, each chapter. So uh, they uh, define the, the file, the PowerPoint that I use in class for activity. For example, the chapter 11 is a Casa Dolce Casa, Omus Vitona, uh, there is uh, always a uh, um, you know, the production with the idiomatic expression, then vocabulary, in this case pronoun, uh, and then again other activity. And uh, after my presentation, my PowerPoint, they see the component that Google was talking about. For example, they see um, the GIF that I will show you soon, the audio that they have to listen, they see the chapter, the, sorry, the quiz that they have to take. Um, when they do a good job of this, they can move to the second audio. They, they don't see the second audio uh, until they don't finish the quiz. And then those are the tutorial, and again, after each tutorial, they see the quiz. I want to show you briefly um, the Moodle page, uh, um, just to give you an idea. So there is a lot of material. So this is the code description. Uh, this is the... Um, the, the language system PowerPoint, and each chapter they see the PowerPoint they use in class, and right after they see the, all the blended material that they have to use. So it's very easy to follow after our, you know, the material that I offer in class to work at home on the, and so on. So it's the, they become very used to the same organization. Chapter two, again, my PowerPoint, and again, the Moodle page. And if I scroll down, you see that we have, uh, uh, well, we have a lot of material. After that, they had to, um, so I was, I was talking about the fact that we produce the audio. And do you know Audacity? Did you use Audacity before? It's a very simple um, tool so that you can record your voice and you can export the file in MP3. Nothing on you know, really terribly, terribly high tech, but uh, we, uh, I the one student, and we are just one student Italian native speakers on campus, and we hired her for the fall semester, and we worked very hard because the spring she was to go in abroad in Mexico. And uh, the conversation is based on the vocabulary on the grammar that we are studying for that chapter. For example, chapter 11, we're talking about the house, uh, we're talking about the vocabulary, for example, about the furniture, different rooms. Uh, and uh, we are, this is just an example, and they have to listen. Capitolo 11, audio 1. Valentina sta cercando una nuova casa a Torino. Decide così di andare in un'agenzia immobiliare Pardo Dolce Casa, dove la signora Adio Spinelli le mostra le case disponibili. Ascolti se entri già. Pronto? Parlo con l'agenzia immobiliare Casa Dolce Casa? Sì, signora. Cosa desidera? Sto cercando casa e vorrei avere delle informazioni sulle abitazioni disponibili. Certo, signora. So Valentina is looking for a house, 
and uh, she did uh, like laundry, she wore the bathroom uh, with uh, the shower, so the list and all the cover about the house. And then uh, they followed the story, because the second audio is a story, and basically Valentina, as a fiancé, the fiancé is Japanese, uh, and needs to go to play a council in Japan, and he left her uh, alone to, to move uh, all the stuff to the new apartment. So the students were very disappointed and very mad with the Yaki Akihiro that uh, in the middle of the movie decided to go to Japan. And uh, after that, they do, we do the tilting class, they do connect, they listen to the audio, they take the quiz. <laughs> okay, now it's your time. Now we are to really talk outside the class. And now we are to produce, you have to show us that your understanding, your memorizing, your producing, and uh, not only vocabulary, but you're you're able to say sentences together. Okay, and Jing is uh, perfect. Do you know Jing? No. Jing okay. is a tool that you use to record what is going on on your screen, and it's very common for tutorial. For example, I was I know, learning how to use Wiki. And someone from the IT can make a jing and navigate from one website to another and show you what is going on. And uh, immediately, we, when we discuss with uh, Jessica the type of technology to give the chance to talk, we were talking about jing and we thought it was a great idea. The idea is okay, now we say, talk about your ideal house, talk about your, your real house, talk about the house, okay? This is an example. This is a great student. Il mio appartamento ideale. Sogno di avere un appartamento carino nel centro di Parigi. Naturalmente, il mio appartamento ideale è ubicato a Parigi perché è una città preferita oltre a New City. Anche se mi piacciono entrambe le città allo stesso modo, Voglio davvero vivere in Francia per parlare il francese sempre. Vivo nell'appartamento con la mia ragazza e anche con il mio gatto e il mio cane. Riguardo al mio appartamento ideale, non ho bisogno di un enorme appartamento. Preferisco gli spazi comodi. Idealmente ci sono almeno una camera da letto, una cucina, un soggiorno e un bagno. Nella camera da letto ci sono un letto comodo, non ho due lampare. So, basically for three minutes, the students outside the class create a PowerPoint, and with the jing, she captured the PowerPoint, and she was able to narrate the PowerPoint slice after slice. And she talked about, she said, oh, I don't need like a big house. But the, all the, the images that she shows it was about the <laughs> But she was talking about exactly um, this room, that color, this material. So it was a full of details. And uh, the gene was, um, so you can export the gene, you can save gene into two <coughs> uh, different ways. One is a file that is very heavy, and another one is just a tiny if I'm doing is the right information is a link and you can copy the link and upload the link on Moodle and after the things that I can reply listen because the things that I listen to your jing I watch your jing but I want to give you a feedback my feedback is oh this is wonderful but remember that you say this instead of that or maybe I want to have a conversation online and she can reply but also the jing is a part of the forum so I don't only reply to the student, but I reply to, to the entire group. Okay. So each student can watch each other jing, it was more collaborative. And this is the I would say the, the end of each chapter. After all the listening and thinking class, this is your time to show that okay, your your understanding, your memorizing, your really have the, the idea about you know, how to describe your house, okay? <coughs> uh, this was Jing, and um, 
using Jingle was pretty easy, but we organized uh, um, the workshop with the Auburn Language and World Center, and we were really make sure that when the students are ready to use Jingle, they know exactly the technology, they don't have uh, any trouble uh, uploading the file, where to upload the file. So the Jingle, the, the workshop was a uh, 30 minutes long and they had to play and they had to upload the demo <coughs> and um, we also told them uh, if they need uh, any support uh, they could uh, no, talk with me or with the NRC uh, where there are all the students uh, and uh, support them. Uh, at the very end of the semester I asked them to respond to a few questions about uh, um, and of course, the first question was uh, were the audio script helpful and the data showed that they found the audio very helpful and uh, it's very clear that uh, they, they use them a lot to improve the listening and comprehension. It was a little bit difficult in the beginning uh, but definitely after you know, the, the second, the third chapter was easier. easier. The other question was about uh, were audios uh, difficult to follow? And the 80% of the students said it was somewhat difficult, mm. and the 70% said very difficult. Uh, so one also um, said that it was a little bit, sometimes the, the sounds uh, was, uh, um, the, the volume of the speaker um, was inconsistent, uh, and uh, one of the things that they say is that they were very time consuming. So we need to, when we give them all these on assignment, we really need to keep in mind that instead to give them two audio, we can give them one. We give them the second one as the extra graphic and the option, for example. Uh, those students, uh, remember that we had an eight credits, uh, five minutes, and a lot of assignments. Um, the last question was uh, about Moodle, and was Moodle easy to use? And the 50% was extremely helpful, and the 33% very helpful, and only the 70% somewhat helpful. It was uh, um, a good resource, uh, very easy. They know, uh, they knew exactly where to find all the material that we were mentioning to us. And then, uh, of course, I had several conversations during the semester about uh, this material. And they say that it was a, a great uh, um, resource, and in particular, Jing was a, a great way to wrap up each chapter before moving to the next one. I used uh, one student's. Uh, um, uh, Chinese second semester of this class uh, asked me to have the script also, not only the audio, because she couldn't understand all of the audio. But matching the script uh, with the audio was uh, a great resource for her. So um, I think we need to be a little bit flexible and adapt uh, uh, the material that we have. It depends on the students, depend on the level, and again, my idea. And I think that we need mostly to be flexible um, and adapt the, the material on our institution was to give them again a bank of material where students can have the access and can um, listen the audio, uh, the second one, for example, and uh, have a, a lot of tutorials, take the test, uh, and have uh, more feedback. And I think I give Jessica a chance to finish the I'll go quickly if I want to. Yes, and I would like also to have some time for the for yes. the questions we have. Yeah, that's that's one for us then. Yes. So one of the main things that I focused on was sharing this information, not only on a five college level, but also on a national level. And something that we do each semester is we have multi-campus workshops. And the first workshop, we had two different campuses. We had UMass and Mount Holyoke. Each had a presenter and then a remote location. So we call them satellite location at Smith College. And we used video conferencing to connect each of these campuses. So regardless of where you were sitting, you had the ability to chat in, ask a question, to see the presenter. It was very interactive, and we had hands-on demonstrations of the tools that were used. Um, and we also encourage bring your own technology. So, 
names up here in the corner using a tablet. I personally use a cell phone. We have Twitter going on at the same time. So depending on your need for engagement, maybe you just want to sit there, maybe you want to take notes, it really catered to everyone in the audience of however they wanted to participate. And in this picture here, Bruno is actually in Italy, so we were all over the place for that workshop, and it worked out great. And second is sharing the actual Moodle course. So uh, the thing that I was responsible for was building the questions. And we had over 900 questions for the quizzes. So there were about 15 questions per quiz. And we set it so that the quiz would only show 10 questions. And if the student didn't get that score that they needed, it would randomize and pull from this bank. So it started in Google Drive. I put it in Moodle. And then I exported it as what's called an XML file. And that's something that we can switch from Smith over to Mount Holyoke or back and forth, however we want to do it. Or maybe you want to just copy the course for yourself. I know there's a lot of faculty that teach the same course over and over again. And you might go through your archives and get a little cross-eyed trying to find that one thing. And you also have the question bank. So if you only want five questions, you could pull the five questions out of the bank. You could select only a certain number of quizzes, maybe looking at the data you felt you don't want to overwhelm your students as much. And also the backup, just in case there's a Moodle upgrade or you shift to a different LMS, you always have that entire course saved. And something that we eliminate is the student responses. So on the slides with PERPA, everything's saved. It's just the content that's saved. And this is an example of what you can select Maybe you just cross jing out and you just take the quizzes. Um, the feedback is intact, so we set the questions to say, this is an incorrect answer. Try looking at this part of the verb. Everything's automatic, so the students get feedback right away, and that's something they never have to build again. And this was extremely time consuming, but something that could be used for years, and it could be shared with other institutions as well. I, I was sitting here and I felt as if we were telling all of you my autobiography because uh, and it brought brought me back to our keynote speaker this morning uh, who was talking about open sources and making and really try not to reinvent reinvent the wheel. And there was a college and I have developed a completely online course and you guys are probably one hour drive from me so we are often um, reinventing everything. So um, this is really, I don't know how to do this, but it's an invitation to communicate more and to share. Uh, often uh, uh, we don't have the ability to share because, for example, the material that I have developed, uh, I only partially own it, and the college decides who to share it with. So I think there are also other, um, you know, issues of uh, copyright and uh, ownership of what you produce. But you know, it's a, uh, it's kind of a uh, wonderful and at the same time, uh, I don't want to say upsetting, but uh, it's concerning to see so much energy uh, in producing the material, and uh, you know people put in the same energy to do the same thing, basically. When I'm sorry, let me just say, if I may just interject very quickly. We, we are well aware that we didn't produce anything that was groundbreaking, that wasn't done before. Our colleague, two colleagues of ours that did it in college, um, we, they basically did the same three years ago by taping themselves, by recording themselves, the big cameras around in Victoria, running around it. So they've done this before. What we felt we had to do on one side, we wanted to cater to our own desire to you know, make what we do more fun, more interesting, to try and do things differently, um, to um, make the most of the possibility that the colleges, the five colleges, were giving us. Uh, but also, we try to fill in a gap that we see in our courses, in particular, the book is great, the book is great, 
that the all your subs, they're not good. We want to produce something. We, we know that our students need that particularly. We can give it to them. We know these works for our students, it may not work for other students, but I agree with you. This is a huge amount of material we've created, and if you compare it to what yeah, we've done, right. it's, an, it's a mountain of things. Yeah, what I decided to do in my course, I really wanted to get away from any textbook. So I wanted the flexibility to um, just use my online course the way I want, and uh, without having students, and use it also for free. Uh, so I have developed uh, also everything that goes with the course. So PDF file for grammar explanations, videos, all the exercises, the podcast, a little bit like what you Can I add something that this material is available for every Italian faculty in the five colleges for 10 years, right, Nathan? Well, we're obligated to keep it available for five years after the end of the grant. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the Mellon Foundation requirement. So we have also some uh, guidelines from the Mellon Foundation that we really need to follow. But for example, at UMass, they are offering an online course. Maybe not this summer, but maybe the next summer, they want to incorporate some our project. They can. Yeah, it's absolutely free. And I would say that among the five colleges, we really uh, talk broadly about our projects, not our material, but it's a material available for every well, no, that's wonderful. I wasn't criticizing that, I was just yeah. saying that it's, uh, you know, we see how we're working in parallel ways uh, and uh, uh, unless we come to a, a conference like this, we're just unaware of what other people are doing. Well, Maybe we, we should do something for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have a question. on something really important that hasn't been aired or articulated very definitely and that is intellectual property. And I worked with a consortium of people at the University of Texas, and we all did different jobs around the country, and we all shared materials equally. And then one of my colleagues died, and everything that his university had posted with him beforehand disappeared this year. No. Because no. the university, yeah. Oh, well, the actually, the, 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 the term of the condition of the Mellon Grant is that five colleges actually own all the property yeah, yeah. produced. And we're obligated to make it available to everybody. It's actually publicly, not just within the five colleges. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to say, not just five colleges, but, but the world. Mm -hmm. So the, Mellon, I think, in its wisdom, has created some issues for us, mm -hmm. in a sense, but it's also, I think, looking to the common good, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a way that uh, hasn't occurred in many other occasions. Because the MLA has funded really wonderful projects at the University of Texas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically like the Khan Academy. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there in the public has access mm -hmm. to the same material. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say that we are going to present this project to the Apple in San Diego in November. And uh, um, I know that we have, uh, again, some uh, uh, contact with the Mellon, but of course, if there is any a type of collaboration for the future. I think that we are very open to see if we can, uh, of course, uh, if the Mellon uh, agree or if there is some, we need to follow some regulation. We can't just say, okay, again, the intellectual property is. Well, the, the reason they have the, the requirement that uh, the property be transferred to five colleges so that it can be made available everywhere. So if, if someone dies, it's not going to be the state. You know, it's, it's, it's a common property.